Um, to the point where we want to make sure uh, the Falcon is ready, pretty much done when our semi-custom seat covers arrive. Uh, so a lot of the interior trim pieces are done. I'll show you that. Uh, those are self, pretty self-explanatory. Um, but wanted to shoot you a little video here. Uh, the seat belts that came out of this, you know, they stunk like mouse poop just like everything else. Uh, the best thing we did was we took them all out and we set them someplace outside uh, where we wouldn't lose them. And that was three months ago. So they've been rained on. Uh, they've been dried. They've been wet. They've been dry. They've been wet. They've been dry. Uh, they didn't get rusty or nothing. So we kept an eye on them to make sure they weren't going to, it wasn't going to damage them to do that. But uh, just those cycles and getting all that air to get them just those cycles of wet and dry and having them exposed to air and wind and stuff. That's huge when you're talking about getting mouse smell out of stuff. We did the same thing with the seats that are patiently waiting for our seat covers. Um, we put them on a couple sawhorses outside and just left them for six, eight weeks. And so they got rained on, then they dried, then they got rained on, then they dried. And then, uh, well, we pressure washed them first and hit them with simple green and D germs and all kinds of stuff. And then left them out there for about a couple months uh, to the point where we wanted to bring them in before the vinyl and the cloth and stuff started to deteriorate because of the sun uh, too much more. So they don't smell anymore. That's a good thing. But right now, we're going to do these seat belts quick. And uh, I just kind of want to show you. I didn't turn the water on high enough. Got more water. Do, 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 do. Dink. More. Nope, that'll work. Uh, again, other than D germ, I'm pretty addicted to simple green. Give your seat belts a little bit of spritz with the simple green. And then because it is nice and sunny and warm today we're just going to give them a quick once over here just to make sure that if there is any lingering mouse smell we'll get rid of that with the simple green and you know we didn't lay these out flat when we had them outside storing so they were wadded up and some of them do have some dirt and crevices and creases in them and stuff like that so I'm going to just rinse those off, flip them over, hit them with the old simple of the green. tip by the way this is an excellent way to revive your nasty ball caps if you got a ball cap that's your favorite one and you wear it everywhere and it gets to the point where it's pretty gross um, get your scrub brush and some simple green give her a little spray down and then it and it'll clean the ball cap right up then throw it in the wash and you know it may not look like new but it'll be clean there we go So a friendly tip for all you married men and women out there. Don't go taking these in the house and throwing them in the dryer now. 
that's going to result in a lot of noise, probably some damage, and an angry spouse or partner. So uh, we're going to find a branch in the dead pine tree, and we're just going to hang these up and let them dry. Uh, we'll do the rest. We've got four males, six females. The other uh, two males are retractables, and they're nice and clean. So uh, we're going to do these other four female ends and get them in the car. Like I said, best way to dry these is just hang them up. And if you happen to have an old dead or dying pine tree, like I've got just a few around the place here, you can, I mean, you can kind of pretend it's almost Christmas and just decorate. Sing some Christmas carols or something. I mean, that's a little. I mean, go ahead if you want to. drying you know we live out in the country so people aren't going to get too upset the wife's not going to care but yeah really uh easy simple hot way of drying seat belts it's sos pad time all right i drove the falcon out into the yard into a shady spot because the sunlight's just it's still warm in the sun uh we're gonna get after it with the SOS pads. Now, this side of the car faced a lot more weather in its life in the pasture and wherever else it's been than this side. This side doesn't look too bad, really. Uh, but uh, this side, because you can still see, there's just a little bit of reflection there. We're gonna be pretty easy on this side with the SOS pads. We're not gonna get after it too much. Um, but we're gonna start, kinda of do one panel at a time. My plan is to start at the front. We're gonna go ahead and SOS the bumper. It'll do a great job polishing up that chrome. And then we'll move up to the hood and then we'll go front, fin front driver's fender and we'll go around the car driver's side and then end up with front passenger fender. Uh, so that's kind of where we're at just to give you an idea what it looks like before no shine there whatsoever um pretty good patina on this side i think it looks pretty cool uh some of this staining from bird poop and that kind of stuff will go away uh, with the sos pad we'll still have some rusty metal up here but it'll look a lot better and then we're going to do some shine juice on it um all this will patina out really nice and we'll get a pretty decent shine after we uh, get that really horrible layer of oxidate oxidization oxid once we get the dirt and the uh, yeah, ox it'll really look good I better get to it try to get this done in about an hour and a half here and uh, you're lucky you just get to sit and watch
SOS pads done. Uh, it doesn't look like much right now. I'm going to give it a quick wash and then we'll give it a little bit of shine back and get you back indoors. Whew, that's a lot of work. Okay, we're done. We gave her the SOS pad treatment, cleaned up pretty good. We've got some uh, shine juice on it that'll protect what's there. The patina kind of really came out and looks pretty good. Uh, we got the really thick rust that was starting to scale, knocked down, and now it's protected, so it's just kind of patina. Um, we got some primer showing here, it's just really cool. This is probably my favorite part of the car where the fuel spill remnant is down to bare metal and rust with the falcon emblem and the gold paint too and the fuel filler cap. I think that's just a cool little area on the car. Hello shop. Hello slant six. Hey, we are back in action at Freedom One Garage. A uh, couple little things to do today. Uh, put the seat belts in Goldie. The seat covers finally shipped. They are on the way, so we're going to have this girl ready for seat covers, and that should be, other than covering the, the package tray in the back, that should be the last piece of the puzzle for Goldie. So real close to the finish line on there. And I think we're gonna tinker with a couple things. Here we go, seat belts. Things we need to get this done. Hardware, the only hardware we took out. Uh, most seat belt retainer bolts, especially vintage ones, have these big washers that go on them. Um, also, there's usually a couple different links. So we have four of the longer ones, three of the shorter ones. We should have washers that complement one or the other. So we've got that. We've got the seat belt pieces themselves. We'll make sense of that here in a second. Missed this guy. Now we are short a washer. That's okay. We'll figure it out. <clears throat> for tools, we've got a 3 8 ratchet, 13 16 socket for these particular seat bolts, cordless impact, and one camo edition blue yummy. Some things you just can't live without. There's our belts all lined up, ready to rock. Three long ones with the class, three a little bit shorter ones with the class. These are the females. And we have three short uh, lap belts, one slightly longer lap belt. I'll show you where that goes. And two of the automatic uh, uh, retractors. So what you're gonna need is uh, all three of these shorter belt assemblies between the latch assemblies and the male assemblies. Those all go to the back, of course, there's one of these for the front passenger and front driver's side, okay? These longer belts, female belts with the latches, they will go to the front. You know their front belts, they're a little bit longer because the front seat actually sits up off the floor. Uh, the back seat, once you clip it in, it actually lays down on the floor of the car and the attachments for the seat belts are just below it. So you don't need that extra length covering the space between the floor and the bottom of the seat. So that's how you tell the front seat belts from the back seat belts. And then this one, the odd duck here, uh, they, back in the day and even today, 
in a bench seat they allow for three seating positions in each seat so this guy is going to be your middle seat on your front so that's where we're at let's get these guys bolted in hey seat belts are in uh let me show you here before i show you other stuff so we've got the two retractables pretty much i think as it should be waiting for seats so moving on to other things well <laughs> that was my plan uh but i got to looking at the old girl and you know we put a little bit of shine juice on it the sos pads cleaned her up pretty good but i can't help but wonder so i got out the buffalizer and it started buffing um apologize i don't have any video of it because i got into the zone again but what we're doing here is we're buffing the good ish paint and not buffing the bare metal but you know she's got a shine to her now um that just looks pretty good uh, we've got the hood this side and the top done here for reference well you can't really see it i don't think there that's her but i think it gives it even more contrast between the bare metal rusty areas and the gold areas uh so yeah we're all the way down this side um i wish i could actually show you guys and gals how well it turned out um we're on a real aggressive cutting compound right now in fact here in the mcguire's ultra cut it's way up there i mean uh, come on focus for me extra heavy cut it says uh we've got the goodish goodisher cider of the paint to do which will be less of a headache than the rest of the stuff because when you when you try to buff around that bare metal it picks up the metal and the rust even though we've had the sos pad on here and washed it a couple times that stuff gets into the wool pad and you have to rinse it out a little more but we'll get this part done here's a here's an example this has not been done so you can actually kind of feel that and then up here in the front where we started this has been done nice shiny see not as sandpaper when you run your hand over it's got dust on it now because i was buffing on the other side but so we're going to go ahead and do this um you know it's it's labor but i think it's going to be worth it it's going to be really cool to get this car out in the bright sunshine when it's all put back together she's she's going to be balling so i'm going to keep after it i'll give you a little bit of uh video now hey thanks for watching if i haven't already told you click the like button hit the bell subscribe that'd be wonderful here we go more buffalizing trunk lid <clears throat> and you can already see how much shinier it is but here's where you run into problems trying to buff paint that's worn down and metal is showing is you get this I don't know if you can see it but this kind of gray that pulls some of the metal and some of that you know impurities into the buffing pad and moves it around so what we'll do is we'll come over it what i mean i'm using detailing spray just because 
that's what was closest to me and I'm lazy. Um, we'll come in and then we'll just kind of give it a little scrub here. That's where we stand. Kind of a neat um, take on patina where you have some shine and then you have some metal. So yeah, I like it. I think it'll it'll look good. Like I said, you put this car out in the sunlight on a nice day, it's really gonna gonna pop. for a really nice bright sunshiny day to show off the results of our SOS pad treatment and also the buffing of the paint on Goldie however it just kind of got cloudy and gloomy and it's misty and crappy out so we're gonna give it a walk around here because you know we gotta get this video done for one um, but here's kind of where we're at <laughs> The sides turned out really nice, really shiny. Um, you know, this is not a perfect car by any means, but really helped brighten up the gold. Uh, again, we showed you the kind of the trunk lid and we were going through it. Just really kind of neat combination of old and worn out and paint that's still kind of hanging on. You can see there's a couple areas, you see, if you see this kind of graying area here, uh, that's the paint getting a little thin from all the treatment we gave it, and mostly all the wear and tear that it receives sitting out in the weather over the years. Um, kind of hard to see uh, the back panel on the trunk, but it turned out really nice, shined up really good. The roof looks pretty cool. Again, we went with some... Uh, Shine juice on the bare spots and then buffed on the uh, painty spots. So it all kind of has a, uh, a uniform look to it. Uh, but at the same time, has quite a lot of cool contrast as well. Really turned out neat looking. One of my favorite parts to look at after the buffing is the hood area. Uh, again, we have some thin paint and spots. Couple little hail dents here and there, uh, but it really turned out nice. Um, it kind of shows uh, a little bit of history on the car, you know, how some of these buff marks and imperfections came to be in the paint is, is part of the story and part of the history of this car. So, and then the driver's side, much of the same, um, except more of the bare metal and more of that patina look and then again like i've said before um, this particular corner of the car just wraps up this car and in, in one image i think so that's kind of where we're at um hey thanks for watching uh a lot of labor in this video when you're talking about budget work you have to be willing to put the effort into it without your own effort you're not going to get anything done on a budget so, uh, appreciate you watching. Click the like button, subscribe, 
and comment if you have any questions about what we're doing with this car. We're going to be wrapping this up real soon. We will catch you on the next one.